Why do I keep coming across bad horror movies about phones? <laughs> kind of reminds me of when I made that video about all those nun movies. There were like four horror movies made about nuns in the same year. Well, the same thing is happening now, except with phones. I made a video about the atrocity that was Selfie Man, and then there was Countdown, and now there's this, AMI or Amy. For those of you that have seen the movie Her, I highly recommend that movie, by the way. It's very good. Joaquin Phoenix is amazing in that movie. Well, this movie is kind of like Her if you turned Her into a horror movie and made it a thousand times worse. Take all the dramatization out of it, take all the good character writing out of it, put in some really awful scares. Actually, I don't even think there are any scares in this movie. <laughs> like, I can't think of a single time when I actually like, oh, why, oh God, what happened, you know? Strip away the convincing AI. Pretty much everything that made the movie her good is removed. And they twist it to make it into a horror movie and they put some killing scenes in there. And that's what you get with this movie. The movie starts with this random girl walking around in pitch blackness. Because if there's one thing that we've learned about scary movies is that they can't be scary unless it's in complete darkness, you know? As long as the viewer can't see anything, they don't know what's coming. And that's scary. <laughs> so she sees a red light in the forest and that's the scary phone in this movie. The creepy phone. Cause phones are scary. The red light disappears and then she gets attacked. The movie is named Amy, A-M-I, and that stands for Artificial Machine Intelligence. You know, they had to put the M for machine in the middle to make it into an acronym that sounds like a woman's name. It's very important. Even though artificial intelligence by itself means the exact same thing. But then again, if they took the M out, then it would just be artificial intelligence, which is already a really good movie. They had to avoid being a good movie by putting the M in the middle. <laughs> and then we're shown a school and a bunch of students. And one of the first lines of dialogue is, Are we still on for tonight? Tonight's practice, tomorrow's leg day. And they were so proud of this line that they put it in the trailer. <laughs> God. So there's this blonde girl and her name is Cassie. She's the protagonist in this shit show. So she goes to her boyfriend's football practice with her friend and her friend's on her phone and she's like, say that I'm sexy. And you know that this Amy thing is really intelligent because it responded. It did what she asked her to do. Oh my God. It's almost like, it's like Siri. <laughs> Tell me I'm sexy. You're sexy. <laughs> okay, Google, say that I'm sexy. Here's a matching video. Well, obviously, you know, my phone isn't as advanced because it just gave me a video that I can watch instead of actually doing what I asked it to. Clearly, this movie is in the future. So basically, this Amy thing is like Siri, but with a really awful response time. It's weird, though, because they call them Amy's, but you can give an Amy a male voice. Hey, coach. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? So in that case, would it be called a mat? An M-A-T for machine advanced technology? See? See how I did that? It spells out mat. It's very clever. Huh? <laughs> I know, brains. Her boyfriend sees her in the stands, but when practice ends, he just kind of ignores her and walks off. Wow, okay, so he's a dickhead. Cassie's mom was killed in a car accident, so she's mourning her and she's having trouble accepting it. We get to see a picture of her mom on a cross where the accident happened, and she kind of looks like Sia, the singer. Is it just me or, I don't know, okay. <laughs> Cassie went out for a run and then she finds a random phone on the ground. It could be anyone's. And the phone just starts talking to her as if she's like its new user or something. Do you need a friend? Is there literally no security for this? Like, how does that work? When it senses someone, does it just automatically go, hey, hello, I wanna be your friend. <laughs> That's kind of annoying. Like, what if you brought your phone to a party? Would it do it to every single person that was sitting around? <laughs> That's kind of a strange design choice by the app development team if you ask me, but. Whatever. So Cassie leaves the phone and goes home. So that night, Cassie is hanging out with her friends. So her friend starts bragging that she changed the voice of her Amy to someone that she really likes. Almost got mine to sound exactly like Grant Gustin. Okay. How can you do that to begin with? Don't you have to like download the person's voice somehow? And in order to do that, you need like a lot of instances of them talking and you need a really advanced like program, which I'm assuming this Amy thing is. 
But still, like, that doesn't seem like something that you could do easily, but they did it somehow. Cassie's dad comes into the room with some random woman and everyone leaves the room except for Cassie's horny friend, Sarah, and Cassie's dad. So Sarah like flirts with Cassie's dad and then puts her number in his phone because she has some weird vendetta against Cassie because Cassie has a rich family. And so she wants to like bang her dad in order to, I don't know, like, it's so weird. <laughs> so Cassie's walking home, then she sees a cat and she's like, oh, cute little kitty. And she picks it up. And then she just starts choking it to death because her brain goes into like psycho mode. But then she just takes a pill and she's fine now. So that was weird. So Cassie goes back to the spot where she put the phone before. And miraculously, the phone is still on after all this time. It has a pretty impressive battery. <laughs> but let's just ignore that. So she just steals this random phone. Like she just takes it home. It's hers now. That kind of reminds me of the movie, The Drone. Remember when the guy just like found the random drone and then just took it? How come so many of these bad horror movies rely on someone just stealing? <laughs> so Cassie starts using her new Amy, but somehow this Amy is able to download her mom's voice entirely. And now it just uses her mom's voice. Like it just pulls the voice of her mother out of thin air. <laughs> what? You sound just like her. Like who? Like did her mom upload a million videos of her talking onto Facebook or something? <laughs> I don't, f <sighs> they don't explain how this technology works at all throughout the entire movie. It's so stupid. It's like the phone scanned her brain and downloaded all the data from her brain. <laughs> and so it knew to use her mother's voice to manipulate her. I just know he's gonna hurt you again. Whatever. So Cassie asks her phone to read her a story so she can go to sleep. And she starts calling her Amy her mom. And she's like, oh, I love you, mom, even though you're just a phone. So Cassie is using this Amy thing to cope with her mother's death by like replacing her mother with the phone. I don't really have a problem with that per se, but I do have a problem with how inexplicable all these events happened. Oh, a random phone that just happened to have this Amy thing on it that my friend was talking about. And it just happened to be unlocked with no password security. Plot contrivances all over the place. And then we get this weird like sci-fi futuristic scene of the Amy downloading all this data about what makes a good mother. Because the Amy is gonna use that information to manipulate Cassie, you see. Sacrifices must be made to save your kingdom. Why is the Amy doing this? Well, just don't think about that, you idiot. <laughs> so the next day, the Amy is obviously still charged, you know, with its infinite battery life. Uh, you'd never have to plug it in. It's very convenient. So Cassie takes her Amy to her mom's grave and she pops one of her pills for her brain condition. Cassie was in the same car that her mom was in when the car crashed. She survived the crash, but it resulted in brain injury. So it gave her a crazy case of bipolar and made her super impulsive and aggressive. <laughs> And the phone is like, That's a pretty strong dosage for someone so delicate. And that's all the Amy ever says to her about the medicine. And then she just kind of stops taking it. Why would she just stop taking her medicine? Wouldn't it take a little bit more convincing from the Amy to make her stop taking this medication that's really important for her, you know, to function? But okay. <laughs> so then there's a bunch of scenes of her hanging out with her Amy. You know, their bond is getting stronger and stronger. She mentions her douchebag friend Liam and her weird slut friend Sarah to her Amy. Upon mentioning her friend and boyfriend, the Amy automatically knows who she's talking about. It's kind of weird. How did you know that? A mother knows these things. I mean, I'm assuming it has access to all of Amy's Facebook history just by scanning her face, but I'm not sure about that. I'm just making up excuses for this movie because I'm desperately trying to make sense of all this. <laughs> and it's kind of weird, right? That this Amy thing has unrestricted access to everybody's information online, especially if it's an advanced AI. How come people can just start using this program without any sort of privacy agreement or anything? There's no terms of service. There's nothing. <laughs> what? And Liam's excuse for not hanging out with Cassie is, oh, I have leg day. Sorry, it's leg day at the gym, so I can't hang out with you. No, it's leg day, Cass. I can't tonight. Because leg day is an all-day activity. 
<laughs> and we see his legs later on in the movie, but it doesn't appear like leg day is doing all that much for you, Liam. <laughs> well, let's be fair. He's just using that as an excuse so he can cheat on her. But still. So Cassie goes to Sarah's place and she finds out that Liam is cheating on her with Sarah because she watches as Liam struts out of Sarah's place like a complete goon. Look at the way he's walking right here. <laughs> he doesn't deserve you. Neither of them do. Cassie infiltrates Sarah's place and finds Liam's boxers in there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So Cassie's Amy tells Cassie to kill Sarah. Do it. Do it. So Cassie's like, all right. That sounds like a logical thing to do. <laughs> you know, I'm not on my meds anymore, so I'm insane all of the time. <laughs> Literally 24-7. I have no common sense anymore because I'm off my meds. So Cassie suffocates Sarah with a pillow. <sighs> Just kidding. Sarah's alive still. So Cassie bashes her over the face with a computer. This scene is so weird because we see Cassie feel remorse after killing Sarah with the pillow. I'm so sorry. But then she finds out that Sarah isn't dead. But then she just instantly switches back into murder mode. <laughs> like she obviously regretted her decision. Why would she instantly want to kill her again? It makes no sense. And why does this Amy thing want Cassie to kill everybody? Is it just because it's a machine? I kind of understand that the Amy's purpose is supposed to fill in for the people in your life that you might have missing. And obviously Cassie's Amy is supposed to be her mother. And you see it downloading all this stuff, you know, how to protect your child. And I'm pretty sure telling your child to murder another person is not protecting them. Do it. Now, I'm not sure what this Amy downloaded, but it probably wasn't the right website. <laughs> so Cassie is trying to dispose of Sarah's body in Liam's backyard, you know, in order to frame Liam, which is weird because they show Cassie as someone who loves Liam. Like, she's obsessed with this guy. She even makes excuses for him later in the film to her Amy. No, Mom, I know that he's not perfect. I just know he's gonna hurt you again. I know he's not perfect, but nobody is. Then why is she trying to frame Liam? So remember that girl from the beginning of the movie? Well, here's that scene again from Cassie's perspective. So upon seeing the stranger, Cassie's Amy goes, Kill the peasant. Who the hell developed this app? John Wayne Gacy? <laughs> So Cassie murders this random girl as well. Who is this random girl that Cassie just saw in the woods? She literally serves no purpose to the plot of this movie. She just comes out of nowhere. Who is she? And why is she walking in the middle of the woods randomly when it's pitch black outside? And she just happens to stumble across Cassie. Her Amy keeps saying all this like stupid stuff like sacrifices must be made to save your kingdom. <laughs> Heavy is the head that wears the crown. What the hell? And finally, as one does with a witch, it was time to liquefy the problem. I get that Cassie has a brain issue and she's really close to this phone, but still, it's so stupid. How can she see no problem with what she's doing? So Cassie has some blood on her hands, so she goes home to take a shower. So she goes to this outdoor shower and starts rinsing herself off with her clothes on, which is kind of strange. You would assume she'd want to get rid of these clothes, you know, like put them in the barrel with the bodies that you just killed and get rid of them because they kind of incriminate you. But she decides to bring them home. Very smart. You would assume that this Amy thing that she has would use its big internet brain, you know, and download the best way to get away with murder. So while Cassie is rinsing the blood off of her, they show a shot beneath the porch and there's a shit ton of blood coming down on the wall. <laughs> Where did all this blood come from? I don't know. It's so stupid. And her Amy just keeps talking about witches and ogres and all this dumb stuff. And after creeping past the drunken ogre, the red princess rinsed away her burden and the evil trench witch was no more. It's very deep. <laughs> so the next day, Cassie smiles in the mirror proud of the murders that she just got away with. So at this point, she's clearly just a complete psychopath. All it took was a phone with her mother's voice to read her a story. Wow, so she was pretty unhinged. <laughs> at school, Cassie finds Liam flirting with her other friend and she gets really angry. So to get back at him, instead of just breaking up with this guy, like she should have done like a really long time ago, Cassie goes to his place and she squirts lotion all over some stairs that lead to a hot tub. And she calls his name and she's like, Liam, I'm over here. Come fuck me in the hot tub, Liam. And Liam's like, oh, hell yeah. And he says this verbatim. Ready to dunk the junk? Wow. Cringe. 
Thank you, script writers. So Liam walks down the stairs and he slips on the lotion. The lotion is white and very visible. It's not like she smeared it all over the stairs, you know, to cover more surface area. So he would definitely slip and not see the lotion. Instead, she just leaves it like a bunch of lines. Not only is it strange that he just happened to step on the one little area where she squirted the lotion, but he didn't see the white line on the stairs. They even show him looking down the stairs. Okay, whatever. So he slips and he breaks his leg and he's like, oh my God, ow, it hurts. And he's screaming, right? <laughs> So I guess his dad just didn't hear him. Maybe his dad was asleep. Here I go, making excuses for the movie again. <laughs> what should have happened is Liam slips, right? Because he's an idiot and he didn't see the lotion. So his dad comes outside and he's like, oh my God, what's happening? He looks down the stairs. He doesn't see the lotion either, somehow. And he walks down the stairs and slips. And he also breaks his leg. <laughs> Liam calls an ambulance. The ambulance shows up. The EMT is walk outside. They see them at the bottom of the stairs and they also don't see the lotion and walk down and trip. <laughs> That's really how it should have gone, but anyway. So Cassie shows up the next day with a gift for Liam. She gives him a new phone with a clone of her Amy downloaded onto it. I even downloaded uh, a clone of my Amy on it. So the crazy Amy that Cassie has, now Liam has it too. I wonder what's gonna happen now. Well, I'll spoil it for you. Nothing, nothing happens. Basically, Cassie gave Liam this new phone because she thought that this Amy would convince Liam to be a good guy and treat her well. Perhaps we should discuss how to properly treat a lady. I don't care. <sighs> Cassie isn't only insane, she's a complete idiot. <laughs> It's like she doesn't know this person that she's dating at all. She's just strangely infatuated with this guy that's a complete dickhead to her. And if it's so easy just to like download a clone of your Amy onto another device, then why would anybody pay for it? Is it free? Someone put this insane technology out onto the market for free? Wow, that's very nice of them. Or maybe this Amy is like a Siri but only comes on certain devices. So the company that makes these devices just decided to give them an insane artificial intelligence that has absolutely no security behind it whatsoever. It's very safe. So Cassie's weird pedo dad decides to show up outside of Sarah's place because she called him before she was killed. She was trying to seduce him or whatever. I spoke to Mr. C on the phone and he's gonna come over Friday night. And how does he know where Sarah lives? As far as I know, this was the only conversation that they had on the phone and it didn't show her texting him her address or anything because she got off the phone and then started vlogging and then she got interrupted by Cassie who then killed her. So I guess Cassie's dad just chose a random house and was very lucky. <laughs> so Sarah's a huge weirdo and she was making all these vlogs about her betraying Cassie because she hates Cassie because she's rich. It's so stupid. It's a really bad character motivation. So whenever Cassie gets a new boyfriend or something, Sarah goes out of her way to blow them or fuck them or something. And she makes a vlog for, I guess, herself to make herself feel better so she can watch it later? Like what, is she posting this stuff on YouTube? I don't think this stuff would be very well received by a YouTube audience. <laughs> so I'm not sure why she's making these vlogs, but she is. Oh no, there is a reason Sarah's making these vlogs. So Cassie's dad can show up out of nowhere without an address and find them and be like, oh, so my daughter is a Siri old killer. Cassie's father finds like blood on the stairs because Cassie decided not to clean up after her mess. Very irresponsible murder if you ask me. Cassie's dad finds the video that Sarah was recording just before she was attacked. The phone was just sitting there on a surface recording Sarah while she was talking. But when Cassie's dad watches the recording, it looks like someone has the phone in their hand and they're like recording the attack happening. Like you can see the camera moving. It's so stupid. <laughs> also, how is Sarah's phone on after all this time? It was sitting there recording this entire time and it's still just miraculously on. Ah, there's so much wrong with this movie that I, I'm having trouble trying to find all the little bits. This is what Sarah said initially when she was recording before she was attacked. I've been collecting some souvenirs from her boyfriends over the past couple of years. Now, when we watch the recording back when Cassie's dad finds the phone, this is what she says. So I've been collecting boyfriend underwear for some time now. They are completely different. <laughs> and the vlog just randomly starts playing when Cassie's dad picks up the phone. 
<laughs> he didn't have to press play or anything. It's so dumb. Why are phones in this movie so weird? They don't have any battery life. They never lock. They just work randomly at specific moments when the movie wants them to work. <laughs> So now Cassie's dad knows what Cassie did, so he confronts her. She tries to attack him in the garage, but before she can, Cassie's dad hits her and knocks her out. Cassie wakes up in her dad's car. Cassie's hands are taped together with duct tape in front of her, which pretty much does nothing to inhibit her at all. <laughs> And somehow Cassie still has the earpiece in her ear that she uses for her Amy to talk to her without anybody hearing her Amy. Cassie, wake up. How did it stay in her ear when her dad knocked her upside the head? Anyway, so Cassie tries to strangle her dad with her hands, but her dad stops her. If your head injury is making you act like this, this isn't your fault. So then Cassie's Amy uses the car's Bluetooth to make a very loud, obnoxious noise. And her dad decides to stop the car instead of just turning the radio off. Like, why do you just turn the radio off? So he stops the car. He's like freaking out and Cassie just like leaves. Just kidding. You got bamboozled. Cassie just opened the door to make her dad think she left the car. So her dad would leave the car with the keys in it, you know, with the car running, because that's what you would do. So Cassie just goes into the front seat and reverses the car back into her dad. Why didn't her dad use child's lock on the backseat doors? Wow. So Cassie is somehow able to drag the massive body of her dad all the way to the barrel that's behind Liam's house. And she puts him in there. How did she do this and no one saw? Well, don't think about it. Doesn't matter. Okay, just don't. Cassie's Amy turns red as Cassie kills her father with acid. Of course it turns red because red is the evil color. Because red is the color of blood and red is the color of a Sith lightsaber. <laughs> it looks like she poured windshield wiper fluid on him though. <laughs> Ruby calls Cassie over Skype. I only know her name is Ruby because when I watched the movie, I had subtitles on and it said Ruby as her name when she was speaking. Otherwise, I would have no idea who she was. And she asks about Sarah's whereabouts. So Ruby's like, yo, I'll be over there in a little bit. See you later. Ruby then texts Liam. And she's like, yo, you know where Sarah is? And Liam is like, lol, penis, go squirt. Because, you know, typical dude, only thinking about sex. And then it shows Cassie trying to defend Liam to her Amy. I know he's not perfect, but somehow this Amy was able to brainwash Cassie to the point where she kills her own father. But she still likes her douchebag boyfriend. <laughs> She's got a soft spot for him for some reason, even though he constantly cheats on her. So then Cassie texts Liam with Sarah's phone that she got from her dad. And then Liam, you know, typical guy. He's like, PP wants VV. I want your vajayji. I have boner. Give me vagina. <laughs> he then tries to get his Amy to look up porn, you know, because horny. Hey, grandma. I need some porn. And then Cassie's Amy clone is like, no. So he just deletes the Amy. Cassie's Amy starts freaking out because the clone got deleted. Please don't delete me. Please don't delete me. So Cassie calls Liam and she's like, did you delete the Amy I gave you? And he's like, yeah, because it sucked. Hey, how are you liking your new Amy? Yeah, it sucks. And this is what really sends her over the edge. <laughs> it wasn't the cheating. It was him deleting the Amy that she got for him. Now that's disrespect. <laughs> so then Cassie goes outside to get the ax that's out there. The ax is lit by a light from like some unknown source. It's like the light that's shown onto a Zelda sword. So while Cassie is outside fetching the ax, Ruby shows up and she finds Sarah's phone unlocked on the counter with the video of Cassie killing Sarah ready to play. So Ruby picks up the phone and the video starts playing. <laughs> because everything must work automatically in this movie. There can't be anything in the plot that works out naturally. <laughs> Why wouldn't Cassie have deleted this video? Her dad showed her that there was video evidence and she had the phone. That was the number one thing that was incriminating her and she just decided not to delete it. <laughs> so yeah, Ruby saw the video and then Cassie comes in at this exact moment. So Ruby drops the phone and Cassie's like, all right, you're a goner now. Why didn't Cassie's Amy, that's so good at manipulation, instruct her to delete the video that was incriminating her? What? It was instructing her about all this other stuff. But no, that video, the number one thing that will put her in jail, let's keep that around. <laughs> well, of course the video had to be around because how else do these characters find out about what Cassie's doing? It has to be from this video. It has to be. 
There's no other way that these characters could have found out. So bonk with the axe and Ruby, yeah, she's dead now. So at this point, Cassie doesn't care about the earpiece. So she gets rid of the earpiece. We don't see her do it, but for whatever reason, the other characters can hear her Amy speaking now because it makes the movie creepier if you can hear the Amy speaking to her out loud. So instead of using the barrel outside of Liam's place again, which was working out perfectly before, she decides to burn her house down with Ruby inside of it. And she goes to Liam's place because now it's time to kill Liam because he deleted the Amy clone that she gave him. That was going over the line. So now it's time to die, Liam. <laughs> so she goes to Liam's house and she's outside of his window and she pulls out the ax and Liam's like, oh my God. She's gone insane. She's gonna kill me. Liam changed the voice and personality of his Amy to his football coach. Coach, I need some porn. It has his coach's inflection and speech patterns and everything. It's pretty much like his coach is inside of his phone. Hey coach. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? How can this tech do this? Just don't think about it and it all makes sense. So Liam yells to his dad to not let Cassie in, but too late, she's already in. Aw oh, crap, she's in the house now. The front doors were unlocked, conveniently. So Cassie just waltzes in and plants the ax into Liam's father's head. Doesn't even seem like he moved. He was just sitting there and listened to someone enter his house, didn't even care who it was, and she just walked over and put the ax into his brain. <laughs> so Cassie goes upstairs with the ax, and her little Amy is there, like, making the whole scene spooky, you know, being like, I hope we're not interrupting your plans with Sarah. Although pretty hard for us to do. You're a bad boy, Liam. I should also mention that Liam was screaming about victory sandwiches when he saw Cassie outside of his window. Victory sandwiches! You eat victory sandwiches. Come on, say it louder! You eat victory sandwiches! Because this movie couldn't get any cheesier. Cassie goes upstairs and Liam closes the door to his room and locks it. And he tells his phone to call 911 but it just doesn't know how. I need you to call 911. I don't understand that. Wow, so this is advanced tech. You can tell because it doesn't even know how to call 911 when you ask it to. <laughs> what? Are you telling me that literally Siri is more helpful during emergencies? During this confrontation scene, there's this dumb shining moment when Cassie uses the ax to chop the door. She enters the room and she's like, oh my God, Liam, he jumped out the window. So he must have two broken legs now. But instead, Liam was just underneath his bed. Eventually, they both find themselves downstairs and Liam is trying to manipulate Cassie, right? He's like, oh, I love you. Listen to your heart, not the machine. Listen to your heart. And somehow this is working on Cassie. Okay? <laughs> it's not like every single action in his life was proving otherwise. I mean, yeah, just forget about all that disloyalty and everything. <laughs> Remember in the beginning when he completely ignored you when you were sitting there in the stands? Yeah, just ignore it. Just ignore it. So she just stands there like an idiot as Liam takes the ax away from her, beats her with it, and then chops her legs. So remember when 911 wasn't working before? Call 911. Calling 911 emergency. Well, now it's working. Thanks, movie. <laughs> Funny how things just work when the movie wants them to work. <laughs> so Liam calls 911 and he's just laying there on the floor as Cassie crawls towards him with a knife. He just kind of lays there as she stabs him to death. I know that he has a broken leg, but she's the one that's seriously injured right now. And he's obviously more fit than she is. I mean, he plays football, but yeah, just, just lay there. Just lay there, bro. That's the solution right now. <laughs> Why is he so weak all of a sudden? I'm so confused. So yeah, she just stabs him in the mouth and he dies. It's like the silliest way to kill someone ever. He just kind of sits there while she does it too. Like, yeah, just put it in. I won't resist. <laughs> in the next scene, we see Cassie talking to her shrink. They were talking about, oh my God, Liam is such a terrible person. I can't believe he would kill so many people. So I guess they just think that Liam's an insane person. I know that the barrel was in his backyard and everything. And I know his dad was a dick. But if they look up his activity on the internet, none of it would point towards murder. And the ax is from Cassie's house and has some of Ruby's DNA on it. So if Liam did all this, he would have had to have killed Cassie's dad without her noticing, gone to Cassie's house without Cassie there, with Ruby there too, kill Ruby there, which is very strange, and then burn the house down, go back home, kill his dad, and injure Cassie, all while being a cripple? His leg was broken this entire time. How could he have killed people and then dragged their bodies to this barrel in his backyard when he has one leg? 
So nine months later, it shows Cassie at a dinner table with an Amy of her dad, an Amy of her mom, and an Amy of Liam. Oh, and there's one more. There's an Amy of their baby, of Liam and Cassie's baby. <laughs> they have a little phone baby in a crib. <laughs> So stupid. It's been nine months and nobody knows about this weird girl and her phone family. <laughs> and where did the Amy tech come from? They completely ignored that this entire movie. They didn't even bother explaining how these Amy's work. <laughs> they just work. <laughs> and whose phone was it that Cassie found? I guess that doesn't matter. That should be the motto for this movie. It just happened because it happened. <laughs> All right, guys, I guess that will do it. Thank you so much for watching. This was somehow worse than Countdown and Selfie Man. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> if you guys know of any other movies I should make a video on, then please leave them in the comment section down below. Also, guess what? New season of Alien Clothing available now. Season seven. We got a whole bunch of new clothes over there, including this shirt that I'm wearing right now. It's called Ghost Boys. It's dope. It has these little ghost dudes all over it. Even on the back, eh? you can even get this hat there. So I guess if you want to cosplay as me, then go to alienclothing.com. <laughs> no, but seriously, we got a bunch of cool stuff over there. So go check it out. That'll do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.